Hello friends, in this video, let us learn about surge impedance loading in power system. So, surge impedance loading is a very essential parameter when it comes to the study of power system as it is used in the prediction of maximum loading capacity of your transmission line. Maximum loading capacity of a transmission line. Now, before going to understand about the surge impedance loading, let us first understand what is surge impedance. Surge impedance. So, it is a well known fact that for a long transmission line, the capacitor and the inductor are distributed throughout the entire line length because it is a inherent property of the long transmission line. So, as an inherent property, the capacitance and the inductors are distributed throughout the entire line length for a long transmission line which is greater than 250 km. Now, when the line is charged, we say this is my Vs sending end voltage and this is my receiving end voltage Vr. Now, when the line is charged, your capacitor component generates VAR that is the voltage ampere reactive it is given by Q. Now the, capa the VAR generated by that capacitor will be consumed by your inductor. So the generated VAR will be consumed, consumed by the inductive component of the long transmission line. Now if we balance the two reactive powers we will arrive at an equation if I say my capacitive VAR generated will be equal to inductive VAR consumed. So if I write my capacitive VAR that is V square upon Xc is equal to I square into XL where V is the phase voltage, I is the line current, uh, X is the capacitive reactance per phase and XL is the inductive reactance per phase. Now from here I am having V upon I is equal to under root of Xc into XL. But I know my capacitive reactance Xc is given by 1 by omega C where omega is equal to 2 pi f into c. Similarly for xl can be written as 2 pi f into l. Now if we consider per unit length then I can add l and here also l that is l is the length of the transmission line. Now if I write it here xl is 2 pi f l into l and this is 2 pi f c into l. So, here I can get under root of L upon C that is V by I. Now, this electrical quantity has the dimensions of the electrical resistance which is your surge impedance that is given by Zs. Now, it can be considered when a purely resistive load which is connected at the receiving end of the line, the capacitive uh, VAR that is the reactive power generated by your capacitor will be equal to the reactive power consumed by your inductor component in the transmission line thereby you can have a lossless line. So it is nothing but a characteristic impedance of a lossless line, characteristic impedance of a lossless line. Now we have understood what is surge impedance. Now let us understand what is surge impedance loading. So surge impedance loading is defined as a power delivered by a line to a purely resistive load which is equal in value with the surge impedance. So that is given by your surge impedance, the units of surge impedance may be watt or megawatt. The surge impedance loading is nothing but the power delivered by a line to a purely resistive load which is having a value equal to the surge impedance. Now if we calculate the power delivered by a line, if I say SIL is equal to under root of 3 VR into my line current will be given by VR upon under root of 3 
into ZS. So from here I am having VR square upon ZS. This is my surge impedance loading. Now when a line is terminated at the surge impedance, I am having a lossless line. That means I can say my if I say this is my sending end voltage and my receiving end voltage due to the line losses only my supply voltage is greater than the receiving end voltage. Now as there are no line losses we are, uh, when we are balancing the two reactive powers the line becomes a lossless line thereby my Vs will be equal to Vr and in this case I am having a flat voltage profile. That is, when the line is terminated at surge impedance, there are no losses. As the line is a lossless line, my sending end voltage will be receiving end voltage, and this case is regarded as flat voltage profile. Now, let us plot various voltage profiles for various loadings. If this is my Vs and this is my Vr, now for no load condition, if I consider this point, for no load condition, this will be my plot. This is for no load and a flat voltage profile. This is for surge impedance loading and this is for your full load condition. This is full load and for short circuit condition, it drops. So this is for your short circuit condition. Now, the surge impedance Z, uh, ZS or the characteristic impedance of a lossless line is independent of length of the transmission line. So when surge impedance is, is in, in, uh, independent of the line that means your SIL is also independent of the line and uh, hence the voltage is also same at every point on the line thereby you are having a flat voltage profile throughout the transmission line. So the voltage is same at every point on the line. Now this is all for your uh, uncompensated line. But when we go to the compensated line, the value of your ZS changes. Let us see how the value of our uh, ZS changes for compensated line. The new value will be ZS dash is equal to ZS into under root of 1 minus KSC upon 1 plus KCH into 1 minus KLSH. So this will be the new value of ZS dash for your compensated line. Now here KSC is equal to the percentage of series capacitive, capacitive compensation by your series capacitor. So KSC is a percentage of series capacitive, uh, capacitive compensation by CSC where KC uh, H is equal to percentage of shunt capacitive compensation by your C shunt and KL into SH is the percentage of shunt inductor that is shunt inductive compensation by LSH where your KC will be equal to 1 by omega square omega square L into CSC and where KSH will be given by C shunt upon C where KLSH will be given by 1 by omega square L into omega square L into L shunt. So this is length 1 by omega square L, L is the length of the transmission line. So this is the value for ZS dash for the shunt. Uh, that is for compensated line. Now, according to this, you can calculate the new surge impedance loading for the new modified surge impedance value for the compensated line. Now, if you go to the applications of the surge impedance loading, 
normally the power engineers represent the line loading in terms of SIL. The maximum load that a short transmission line or you can say the short distance transmission line less than 80 km. The maximum load that a short distance transmission line can transfer is about 1.2 to 1.5 times your SIL without any compensation. So, if we look at the loading, uh, that is the loadability of a 110 kV line, then in terms of surge impedance loading, I will be having 1.5 into 110 kV square upon, and if you look at the overhead conductors, the impedance we are having is 400 ohms, and for the underground cable, the impedance is 40 ohms. Now, if I put my ZS is 400, I will get approximately 45 megawatt. That means the loadability of my 110 kV is 45 megawatt. Similarly, if I go for 400 kV loadability, that is SIL will be given by 1.5 into 400 kV whole square upon 400. So, this will be around 600 megawatt. So, you can for any given uh, line voltage, you can determine the loadability of line. Alternatively, you can calculate the number of lines required to transfer a power, say some uh, 3000 megawatts of power, you can calculate the number of lines required to transmit this power at various voltages that is around 400 kV or 765 kV or some 1000 1100 kV. Now, alternatively you can also have a choice of the voltage of line that you can transmit through the transmission line for this 3000 megawatt of power. You can select from the uh, voltages that is about 400 kV or 765 kV or 1100 kV depending on the loadability of line to transfer these amount of power. Now coming to the other application, it can also helps in determining the lightening surge voltage. Lightening surge voltage as it is related to the lightning surge current I is equal to V upon Z. Now, this helps in selecting the lightning arrestor, that is, uh, if I write it here, lightning arrestor ratings, lightning arrestor ratings effectively to protect the equipment of the power system. So, these are the applications, you can select the, you can calculate the number of lines, you can calculate the loadability of the line, the given uh, the voltage of the line and you can select the, you can have a choice of the voltage of line to be transmit a certain amount of given power and uh, you can uh, select the rating of your lightning arrestor to protect the equipment of the power system. So this is all about your surge imprints loading, I hope you have understood well, please subscribe to the channel, thank you.